This is an exclusive presentation of the Foreign Press Association. Thank you so much, Jonathan, and welcome everybody. I'm very excited to be able today to talk a little bit about music and especially how musicians have been affected by the virus. And they're far from being the only ones, but this is a community that I'm particularly interested in. And today I've invited two musicians, Peter Apfelbaum, who is an incredible multi-instrumentalist and composer based in Brooklyn. He has performed with Don Cherry, Trey Anastasio, Bill Laswell, and he has also written for the Kronos Quartet. And Peter plays a combination of world music and experimental and avant-garde jazz, and he has a really cool sextet at the moment called Sparkler. I've also invited Kike. Kike Escamilla is a wonderful uh, Mexican performer from Chiapas, but right now he lives in Toronto. And he likes traditional Mexican styles of music like ranchera, wapango, but he also likes rock, reggae, and pop. And today I'm going to talk to both Peter and Kike, and I'm gonna ask them about their relationship with their audiences at the moment. So first of all, thank you guys for coming today. And um, <clears throat> I would like to talk to you, Peter, about what it's like to be a musician right now when you cannot go and play at a club or at a theater and how does it feel to be um, to be playing in front of a screen and for your fans your audiences how has this impacted your creativity <clears throat> yeah well that yeah it's an interesting question um, hello everybody Glad to be here and, and thank you, Emily, yeah. for having me. Um, yeah, I've been thinking about this question a lot. You know, it's definitely a bit weird um, to play and then not hear the familiar sound of applause or, or mm -hmm. glasses clinking or people shouting or, or whatever. Um, but at the same time, that particular situation is not completely unfamiliar because this is actually something that we musicians have been dealing with when we go into the recording studio. Um, so musicians have been dealing with that kind of phenomenon, um, performing and going into a, re when you go into like a professional recording studio or usually in a home studio as well, um, with a professional studio, you're basically doing a performance for no audience other than the engineer and the tech people and then whatever other musicians or friends might be there. But for me, if, I, if I'm doing something solo, like for instance, a solo piano uh, recording, I have to try to summon up the em energy somehow that I would normally get um, from playing in a live situation. So, um, so that's something that I think we musicians have, have dealt with in a way. I mean, you end up kind of playing for yourself, but then you know the audience is out there. So that's it. it in that way, it's different. You know, it's, it can be nice, uh, even though you don't get the applause, it's, it's nice to hear uh, and read people's comments. Um, and actually people appreciate, um, I mean, everybody will have something to say about this, but people I think appreciate being welcomed into the artist's home. It's like the listener gets, or the viewer gets to be a guest in the artist's home. And that's something that um, the informality of that, even though it can take some, some doing for the artist, like when I did my first uh, Facebook Live event uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, I had some technical problems and there was no technical crew there to fix it. So I had to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a very humbling experience, but um, then the audience gets to see warts and all, you know, they, they get to see the real you. So for better or for worse. <laughs> No, we want we want to see the real you, Peter, yeah. and I'm happy we can see that. What about you, Kike? Tell us how is well, it for I you? I totally I totally agree, and and uh, I can get behind everything that Peter shared, uh, especially about the, you know, um, I've been performing. Uh, I'm pretty comfortable, you know, coming out. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been okay, you know, going on on stage, uh, places that I don't know anyone and and uh and being able to just come out and and talk and you know what you need to do and between songs i usually sh uh share stories so i'm pretty comfortable at this point 
in 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 my 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 career my my life but definitely i ran into the same situation uh when i did my first live um about a week ago i think maybe two weeks ago and uh, I, i had no crew i had no one to ask it's just literally you know humbling experience humbling experience where you have to like hold on guys can you hear me out there or something was not working with the interface because i was sending the the feed through my interface to the facebook feed and and there's a bunch of people from you know anywhere like like china in the morning they're watching it and it's just kind of like oh shit or i even had to go and take a like a you know like a pee break and it was kind of cool because it was just like you know this is something that i would have never experienced i would never push myself to you know move my computer into this place this is my usual like new little stage but it's usually the dining room and i remove the table something that i've never done in my own place in never you know so it's kind of like there's some interesting uh moments where i'm like i would have never done that i would have never played a show for people uh and out of my living room and and i can be picky about technical issues on a real show and all of a sudden here i'm like you know tied to just my little sound and whatever you know so it's been it's been an interesting uh, experience a bit somewhat liberating and uh, and also opening the mind to say you know it's okay to get out of the box sometimes and be different yeah so kike i was speaking with you this week and you were telling me that you feel like now all musicians are kind of on the same level so would you say yeah. that uh, the virus is an equalizer that everybody has the same kind of production capabilities yeah i know we've heard that uh that was one of the first things that one night i was here by myself uh, i live by myself and uh and i've been spent a whole month of of uh being inside uh And, you know, one of the first things uh, after this whole thing hit hard for Canada or in the U.S., um, the whole thing of the equalizer, right? Uh, the greatest equalizer, the great equalizer. But uh, only a few days ago, I was watching on my feed on Instagram and, uh, and I saw that all my friends, my local musician friends in Toronto or in the U.S., anywhere, they're all like doing their live thing. And, and some of them are really amazing. And then... I'm flipping through that. There's like 12 channels live at the same time. And, and then I see Universal and uh, nothing, nothing against those guys. But I was just like, what is Universal doing here? Like, so I tapped on the, on the live and the music. It was like out of all the ones that I was watching and, you know, I was like, there's no music, man. There's no big stage. There's no big sound. There's no big production. There's not like millions and thousands of dollars to make something that is sometimes not um you know of of decent content or quality it's all stripped it's naked right now and and seriously i was like this is an interesting time man like with all their money they can't do anything this is like you know you could be justin bieber or you can be uh the greatest musician and justin bieber might be a great musician too i'm not sure what he does but i'm just using examples of realms of music and all of a sudden it's like you do with the same same tools that everybody has so thank you thank you kike i think this is a really interesting thought and i wanted to ask you peter um do you feel um actually sorry both peter and kike do you guys feel that now you can actually perform for more people at once and people you may not have been to kind of put together during the same show what do you think peter Absolutely. I think that's one of the positive things about this. And I was kind of starting to do that already. I think we, a lot of us musicians were doing little Instagram videos. I was getting into that when I would get inspired, I would just post it. And then yeah. people who happen to be the like my followers or whatever, or on Facebook, then they would comment. But the ability to, uh, to reach people, um, you know, I think we've all done live streams before, but the ability to do it and actually when it works be in control of it and actually be in real time communicating with um people around the world um like kike said it, it's like if you do a 
afternoon or evening performance here. People are in Asia are waking up looking at it and um, people all over. And I love that. I think that that's, um, that's something that really mm. is, is kind of, you know, that's something that we musicians have tried to do for a long time, you know, have, have, you know, we travel and play music for people around the world, but to have people sharing an experience together in real time around the world um, can be that a beautiful thing. That was beautiful. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was quite, uh, quite the experience. Right. And I was not uh, expecting that just to, to second what you're saying. I, I was not expecting to, I mean, I was hoping that maybe I would only get people that are in my time zone in, in Toronto time and uh, started at 8 PM. And then people in China, a friend in Beijing and Shanghai both happened to caught it. And I mean, you know, the Facebook doesn't exist, but they're, they're North Americans. So they have their the VPN or is it VPN thing. So they're able to connect to Facebook and they send me a message saying, Hey man, I just caught you by random chance at like <laughs> nine, nine AM. Hmm. It's, yeah. it's just, I don't know. It's an interesting. So guys, tell, tell us a little bit about how audiences can find you both during the crisis how do they manage to get access to your live shows, uh, your Facebook shows? How do they, is it like through your fans on Facebook or do you call friends and you tell them, hey, I'm going to do this show like at five or at six today? How do you manage to get your, your audiences uh, to, to attend your performances? Um, well, speaking for for myself i'm still kind of figuring all that out i'm trying to get the word out kind of any way possible mm -hmm. um unfortunately most of the people that have seen the the two live shows i've done in the last couple of weeks have been they happen to be my facebook friends so they see the post on facebook or um we're connected on instagram but i've also um for the last one i i sent out um an email to um, to my email list with a link, letting people know, kind of reminding them that they don't actually have to be, um, they don't actually have to have Facebook to view it. They can still go to the page and see it. So people are still kind of getting used to the idea that they actually could go to like Facebook, for example, and not have to sign up and have their own page. Um, but getting the word out, um, you know, kind of the same as doing a gig, like any way possible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll call some of my friends and let them know or, or, you know, any means of communication I can use. Um, but I'm also looking at other platforms that don't um, depend on Facebook or Instagram, even though they can, they can be great, but other, other ways too. So I'm, I'm kind of still figuring it out. Peter, question. You said that uh, you've been able to, to have people watch your show on your Facebook feed without them having a, an account, a Facebook account? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they can do that because when you, if your page is, if your page is public, um, mm -hmm. then you can just share the link to your page and don't and not have to have a Facebook account from what I understand. Because yeah, some people I know did view it and they don't actually have a Facebook page. So Kiki and Peter, would you say that this, uh, this pandemic has allowed you to become creative in new ways? And in what types of ways have you become perhaps more creative or something like, tell me what, what have been some of the surprises? Well, um, KK, so, you want to go for me? I, I could just say quick that um, one of the, the things again is I didn't really um, have in mind to do before this, I was just doing the traditional approach of you know getting the gigs getting the gigs with an agent that i that i work with and uh, just traditionally and never really thought that i would resource to to having a, a live show uh at my home or how to improve the sound should i ju just do it like with the speaker um from the you know the phone speaker or the computer speaker and then so it's kind of put me in a position to think of what it's going to work better for the audience there and then the light and then the lighting and then um, also uh, different elements. Like I, I'm, I'm starting to think, oh, maybe I should just create um, like, I mean, I'm still working, working it out, but should I create just a, a channel and maybe I just put not live every time, but maybe videos that are recorded uh, through, you know, an interface kind of like a little produced. They're still live, but a little bit more produced 
and then I, I use it on my Patreon, which I heard about Patreon, I don't know, four years ago, I think. And I didn't want to even go into that world of Patreon. My friend uh, was working for them and he mentioned it one. And, th and I still didn't think I needed that. And all of a sudden it's like, boom, there you go. Like Patreon could be the great, to the greatest tool for this right now. So I'm still sorting out a few details, but uh, I have other performances coming up. There are, I'm going to do them here. And, uh, and, you know, there's still lots to, to sort out. Yeah, Kike, I, I totally agree with you that um, I know for myself, I've had to learn some things about lighting. I've always been interested in lighting, but, but I never realized how unprofessional I am <laughs> <laughs> until I tried to, you know, have to really um, work on it to get the right feel for, for a, um, you know, a house concert. Um, so I, I know for me, I've learned things, um, but again, like you say, it, it makes you get creative. You think about what you would want. Um, by the way, Kike, your house looks beautiful, man. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, Thank it, it reminds me, you know, I want to, um, one thing I've been thinking of too, is that how for us musicians, especially for those of us who use um, more than one instrument, maybe many instruments on stage, um, our stage setup, um, for me, it's kind of like a, a movable shrine. Uh -huh. And it's a, a, it's usually a very temporary shrine, but, you know, I get to the gig early and set up a bunch of stuff. Um, myself, I use sometimes various keyboards and a lot of percussion and yes. various horns and things like that. So actually, to be able to take advantage of my own home where I have the luxury to leave all my stuff set up. A little temple, it's actually, right? Yeah, it's actually yeah. kind of cool to have. It's fucking to, awesome, man. Like, right? You can I, work on it and say, oh, I'm going to move <laughs> this bell <laughs> and kind of make things easier for yourself. Because for me, it also helps me in an artistic endeavor that I've been kind of moving towards anyway, um, that I've been doing in bits and pieces since I was a little kid, where I play piano and tie some bells on um, or saxophone and drums a little bit together, like so I can punctuate my saxophone playing with a percussion instrument or something. So now I kind of, I kind of have no choice. I mean, for me, I, I, um, or I, I do, I could do just like solo saxophone, but for me, it's actually a great opportunity to, when I set all my stuff up, to be able to actually figure stuff out, um, to utilize these different instruments together, which is something I've only done in little bits in life up till now. And now I'm really getting into it more. And actually, yeah. Peter, would you like to play a little bit for us now? Sure. I think that something maybe that you can show us what you mean by, you know, putting all these things together and having the bells and whatever you can, you can do for us now. Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. Okay. I'm going to play you something um, using the melodica, the wind keyboard. Um, many people out there are probably familiar with this. Um, and I have some bells, which you can't see at the moment, and I'm not going to move my phone because we're go everything's going pretty well, so I don't want to chance it. But I have um, a clump of bells that I've collected um, really since I was a teenager um, from all over, from, from Austria, from Africa, from India, um, and I have them around my right ankle. So I'm going to play something on the melodica and use the bells. Thank you. 
Hey, Peter, this was great. Thank you. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank so you. I have another question for you guys. Um, I would like to know if you think you're going to be able to make money performing from your houses. How do you manage to monetize these live shows? Is this one of the questions? Uh, Emily, is it one of the questions? Are we doing the Q&A or are, we just go are you just... Uh... Yeah, I think that, uh, yeah, that's part of the Q&A. Okay, Is just that so okay? that we, we I, I'm seeing a couple of questions here. So okay. if we're already working on those, all right, good. Uh, I could, uh, do you want me to go, Peter? Sure, um, for me, you know, again, I'm, I'm working that out. I've so far just done Facebook Live events where I mention um, both in talking and then along with the link um, that, uh, donations can, are accepted and can be made um, to my PayPal account. Um, but I want to expand on Patreon? that because not, I don't have Patreon yet. I, I'm looking into it seriously, though. I think, I think that, it, uh, it's, yeah. It, it sounds like a great idea. Are you able to accept? So that way people, um, they yeah. get a membership to your Patreon, yeah? Basically, uh, yeah, I, f I find so far, for example, in my short experience on, on performing live online <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, is that people are really willing to, it's beautiful to see that people are willing to offer even my first show I did. Uh, I did it here, the one that I did two weeks ago. I've only done one so far, but uh, just from that one, it really, I woke up to new ideas the next morning. Literally, I was like, shit, man, like that was weird because in, I, did right. a two, I did an hour and a half show and the numbers of, of views in, the, in that time, particular time, was 6,700 people. No, 6,600 people because mm. it was presented by uh, a Canadian uh, publication called McLean's, right? I think it, I don't know if you guys get it down there. And oh, yeah. McLean's, and also it was supported by other uh, initiatives that were supporting new live music online. So I guess that that helped. It was not just my friends because I don't have that many friends in, on Facebook. Uh, I mean, I did it on my pro my prof personal profile instead of my page, hoping that it would be more like my, you know, real friends watching and wanting to tune in. And it end up, ended up being like lots of people that were not even connected to my my personal or my private Facebook. And that came a lot of uh, flow from this publication that had their, their feed. So, but I was pretty, pretty like shocked to see the response and the amount of comments and the amount of places and the different time zones. And I was like, man, this is a different way that I never thought I would reach that many people in one hour and a half of a show. So then I started thinking maybe instead of doing the donate, donate, donate right here, maybe I can convince them to just say, if you like this, maybe just go to a Patreon and become a supporter of $5. I think that's the, the first, um, so just First level, yeah. yeah. So then you realize, you know, five bucks for someone who is still employed, for those who are still doing their, you know, work remotely, that economically hasn't changed that much. Five bucks is, you know, if they like your music, it's not really asking much from them. But in a long term, and they might be a little challenging because obviously you have to give them something to keep them uh, interested and feeling that their money that you're they're investing on you is is worth something so uh i looked at the the whole patreon and i saw some other profiles and, and people have like you know like it's 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 real that some people are actually able to make over a thousand or two thousand dollars on a base on a monthly basis out of this this patreon thing because you might have some fans that are really really into your stuff and they're like you know i'll give you happily three hundred dollars a month just because they're they're okay and 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 can, and can do it. So, I think that for me right now, I feel that donations are going to be good. But how many donations can people be doing at the rate of shows that we're, that we're putting out there? So I'm right. sure it still happen. My friend, uh, I had two friends that night that I didn't I didn't have a button. I didn't have I didn't say anything about donations. 
because that show was being paid. So that fortunately some generous uh, initiatives here in Canada, in Toronto, came from the National Art Center in Ottawa. And then they immediately they realized that artists were gonna suffer. So they opened this amazing, uh, some philanthropist gave them money and then they were able to say, here's like a one-off uh, performance, paid performance so that you can, you can do your thing. And we, we won't even touch anything, just do it. Mm -hmm. So I was okay with that because I knew they had the, the back, you know, com the, the support from them already, the guarantee. But uh, I didn't do the, put the button. I didn't say, hey, guys, here's my email. Here's my Venmo, nothing. People were still kind to say, hey, man, how can I send you some money? On, on an email transfer that we have in, in Canada. I know that that doesn't work the same way in the US, but here's something just by email. So people mm -hmm. spend 50 bucks, people, another guy sent 35. And I was like, that's, that's really nice that people are even considering without asking. So if I were to ask them, hey, sign in for a monthly $10 uh, or $5, uh, it could be, it could be uh, something, some, a good start, I feel depending on how many people you can reach, you know? That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Sorry for my lengthy answer, yeah. Yeah, no, that's helpful. That's really helpful to know. Um, it's nice that they have that in Canada. And I know that there's various platforms that are starting to do that now, um, music production companies or even clubs or concert series where they want to um, still do something, they want to still be visible and they want to maintain um, the relationship that they have with us, the artist, and be able to um, provide a platform. So I think that's that's going to grow. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to ask you another question, guys. I'm thinking that now that you're not performing um, with other people on stage and you don't have your audiences in front of you, so that energy right now doesn't exist for you. And I was wondering if when the, the crisis started and you started not being able to perform um, physically in a theater and with other musicians next to you, did that, how did that imp impact you um, creatively, musically, and maybe spiritually? Did you feel that something all of a sudden was gone from your life? Mm. Can I go or Peter, you want to go? Yeah, you got it. Personally, I feel that, I mean, I've been, my the music that I do, usually it's, I, I get hired to do both formats with the band and many times without the band. I mean, I, I'm a songwriter and, and, you know, I write my songs by myself with basically, mm -hmm. usually it's a guitar first thing. Sometimes it's been from an instrument like drums that I started a whole idea. But most of the songs are just, you know, singer, songwriter kind of basis so I've, I've done a lot of work uh solo on on different kind of settings and stages so i don't not having the band right now it's definitely something that i've done before but having the appreciation that right now the content is being delivered in a very natural and stripped down form it kind of elevates that uh, as i said earlier like right now nobody else is doing huge productions nobody else can do anything than just their phone or the computer either their guitar but there's no uh super elevated uh things it's just very uh, condensed to what your soul and can can deliver musically so i think that that's pretty cool because uh definitely there's an appreciation there's all of a sudden there's a, there's like a heightened appreciation for the what one or two or three performers can do in a in a kitchen or in a washroom or in a living room, you know? Yeah. Yeah. For me, I would say that um it's it's um I, I definitely miss, you know, seeing my my friends that I play with, but you know, we communicate um, you know, through you know, we call each other now. We talk on the phone more than we yeah. have in a long time, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, and for me, I think kind of like Kike, it sounds like as well. Um, I, you know, I, I often play solo. So this is just a situation where I'm having to just do that. And I develop that. And the other thing for people to, to understand too, is that I think most of us musicians 
are very adaptable. Mm -hmm. We're used to being adaptable. Creative people in general, I think, are um, because you get into this thing of using what you have. And you can yeah. use what you have in all kinds of ways and new ways and figure out new innovative ways to combine things, even if you just have one drum and like yeah. a bugle or something, you, you, you know, it's like, you know, people, you know, people around the world who don't have a lot, they get creative. So there, yeah. there is that, you know, using what you have That's for me. Good. Yeah. Um, one thing I miss is um, in my in, in where I live, I don't have a grand piano. And that's one thing um, that I miss because when I play solo, um, one of the main instruments, sometimes the main instrument that I will use is a, a piano. And I, I love having um, a nice concert grand piano. Um, and fortunately, I teach at Brooklyn Conservatory and they have an endorsement with Steinway and so I can go there and practice um, nice. if I need to it's not far from my house but of course they're closed now so I don't have that so that's that's one thing that I miss but in terms of working with the other musicians again you know we do that in um, in now like virtually like I'm working on some tracks with my good friend Aaron Johnston the drummer from uh, the group the Brazilian Girls um, he and I have worked together in a lot of contexts um, through the years, and now he's making tracks at home um, on drums with samples and this and that, and um, sending them to me, and I put horn parts on them or keyboard parts on them, and we can work together that way. So um, that's, again, something that I'm getting more set up to do at home because that's like going to be a new way to play together. Right. Cool. Um, Kike, you know, I was wondering if you may, and uh, sorry guys, in fact, I, I wanted to ask another question. We have some questions in the Q&A and I'm sorry I was forgetting. I was thinking uh, one of the questions that uh, we have here is, do you think that you will continue to perform uh, this way after the crisis? Do you think you will, you will still do some live Facebook shows, for instance? Can I go? Yeah. yeah. I, I feel that um, this is the, I mean, among all the, the dark sides of, of this uh, crisis, uh, there's a lot of positive things that are coming. It's, it's a good, like, shakedown, you know, like, uh, I feel that this already got me out of the, the uncomfortable feel or feeling of playing from my house to someone because it was my... I grew up my whole life being, you know, like somewhat private, private, and and uh, and what happens on the stage obviously is a different thing, is work. But then I'm involving, you know, my surroundings and my inhab my inhabited um, among my music. So I'm I'm thinking even differently in how I can play other songs that could resonate differently here playing them live like maybe more acoustic stuff i usually play most of the time like 99 percent is like of my shows are with an electric guitar whether i'm playing solo or or, or with the band so I'm, I'm thinking of other instruments that i could even use to to implement in my music and it's, i'm thinking literally outside my own uh you know 25 year old box so i think that uh, aside from going back to to the live stage on on the regular format, which will be perhaps a theater or perhaps a, a festival or a bar, I think this is uh, another realm to to treat on its own. Even when we have the opportunity to go back uh, outside and, and and play, so I do consider that I will continue to do this, but in a creative way. And it's all about a friend of mine from New York. Actually, he he was telling me that he was a little he was a little uh, saturated with the amount of content going at the same time on the social media outlets, right? Uh, on the first two weeks of the, the the lockdown. And I agreed in a way with him that if we don't try also, then we also have to, I mean, not that we need to put restrictions on people how, if they want to be artists or not, but the ones who are in the professional side of the arts, also we need to keep striving to to actually make it 
to to raise the bar not just you know hey guys whatever oh it sounds like shit okay well, i don't care i think that his point is valid you know to to try to to keep finding the the creative ways to make art whether it's with the same limitations that we have uh, currently yeah man amen to that yeah i also um i would i would keep going i mean i i you know i've already enjoyed when the spirit hits me making a little instagram video or something like that but now um you know just kind of trying to yeah raise the bar about what i can do um from home and you know take the opportunity to control the situation i might do something using i was thinking some get some other colored light bulbs and just really kind of do that or some costumes yeah. maybe um, and even take it outside of my house i mean i can still go outside so i actually i live across the street from prospect park and there's a really nice area that's kind of like a little forest um and i want to go in there i mean I, nothing is stopping me from taking my phone there and i might do a yeah you know solo flute concert in the forest you know yeah that would be beautiful man yeah yeah so i'm thinking of I'll, I'll do that there's you know, some turtles that live in the lake right near there too. I'll go play for them. You know, maybe I could put them <laughs> in the video. So <laughs> definitely some creative things we can do. As long as you don't want to use them as precaution, man, because I've seen the turtle. I <laughs> uh, no. Oh man, that, that that reminds me. I wanted to ask you something, PK. Yeah. Um, you lived in Mexico City for a while, yeah. I lived in Mexico City. I mean, I grew up and I was born and raised in Mexico until I was 27. And and out of those years, I I lived only two years in Mexico City. The last two years oh, okay. in Mexico, I lived in Mexico City. Man. Wow. Are you? Um, I wanted to know if you're familiar with a musician named Antonio Zepeda. He plays pre-Columbian instruments and he makes a lot of his own flutes and things like that. He also plays like turtle shells and things. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I know. Uh, I know another, uh, a few other musicians with the last name, but I don't think I know Antonio Cepeda. No. Okay, he's yeah. older. I think he's like in his seventies now. I did some playing with him in Mexico years ago, but just thought of him because of the turtle shell. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, no, I know. I was just joking because I know that some some people uh, do their percussion, make them make them with with the shells, right? But I'm sure yeah. some people in the south they they just use the the, the already you know dead turtles. I don't think right. they kill them for that. Hopefully, yeah. Not. <laughs> Hopefully not. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, you know, I, yeah. I, I wanted to know. Um, we heard Peter, and I love hearing Peter play music. Uh, but I also really love hearing you play music. And I was wondering if you wanted to do something for us without a turtle shell so that that's totally your call i don't have the turtle sh shells but i have on my percussion rack uh, um donk i hope you, you get a, you don't get offended there with the, with the donkey jaw no <laughs> whatever, i don't whatever I don't it have takes donkey jaw, Kiki, this is this is your stage now um no we can't bring those those uh those things into canada they don't let them uh through but um let me just see if I wasn't able to do a, a, a again, you know, technical things that are still being discovered. I'm not sure if the guitar is going through the interface right now. I see the signal here that it is, but you tell me if it's is it coming through. Is it? Yeah, it's working. Because I'm being tricked with the sound of the amp over there, but I'm not sure if it's coming through. You guys like. Yeah. Less volume, more volume. More volume, PK, you go for it. More volume for the guitar? Just a little bit. It's really good though. Okay. It doesn't click here. That's the thing, you know, it's like there's no way of hearing. I'm just trying to discover what's the best way to do your own test and the best way is like using a friend on the other end on her phone or something. Most people will be watching something live on a phone. So um, I was doing some testing with a friend, and, but still, I'm not there yet. So let me, let me see. So this song is a, it's a song that I wrote about the, uh, the indigenous, indigenous women in, uh, in northern British Columbia. There's a, a highway called Hadley. 
how it appears and it's all the indigenous missing in the uh, have not been found and we have many many situations and cases like that in mexico as well so i wanted to draw a parallel with that with that story <laughs> Really cool. Salud, salud. With a little mezcalito from Oaxaca. <laughs> so, is there something that I didn't ask you that I should have asked you about this new, completely surreal situation, completely unexpected? Is there something you really are dying to talk about and I didn't ask you any questions about that? In my, on my end, I could add that for, I can't speak for everybody uh, in other um, fields of work, but I think that for artists, I've been talking to a bunch of other friends in many different places or countries. And, um, you know, I, I think that we have to see this opportunity. I was talking to my friend in Germany about three, four days ago, and he's an amazing, a really great songwriter and pianist. And, uh, He said that, uh, you know, Germany got some some support from from the government and all Germans and all residents, anybody that was living there. Uh, so he was saying that he 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 didn't know what to do if he wanted to go and move somewhere else for for just to be outside of Berlin. And I was thinking, what a great opportunity to to take this. I mean, I know that it's not the same in other countries because there's no 
uh, social and, and uh, monetary securities. But uh, I think that we have to probably see the, the good side of, of, of having some time to slow down our regular lives and our regular, um, I don't know, our, uh, I find I'm finding more time to, to play more music in my personal case. I'm finding more time to, to do things I couldn't do before. And, and I think that out of this, I don't know how long it's going to last. Uh, and the struggles that we might still f face, but I find that um, it's it's a creative and and a very productive time uh, if you really want to want to see it in a positive way. You know, uh, it's hard to be in, inside at home, but uh, also it's it's almost like giving yourself a chance to reboot and reset a lot of things that we were just going day by day. So. Um, that's how I'm trying to see it personally, you know, as a great opportunity to kind of like reinvent my, myself in many different ways that I didn't want to see before. Yeah, for me, it's, it definitely is an opportunity to, um, to just keep working on my stuff, you know, and maybe, um, you know, I was talking about ways of, you know, I can develop certain things like approaches playing more than one instrument at once. Um, but also like um, I saw a, a beautiful video that John McLaughlin posted recently and my old friend Stephen Bernstein shared it today on Facebook where he's just sitting there with his guitar and it looks like, I mean, I'm assuming it's his house and he just made this little um, track that he was playing with his phone and then he's playing along with it with his guitar um, that's the kind of thing that I think we've, we've all done, um, just mm -hmm. some, um, but he just says, you know, he says, here's something I'm working on in seven, eight. And he says mm -hmm. something like I've played in seven and eight, seven, eight, you know, pretty much all my life for years, but I still feel like I can get better at it. And so he was taking the attitude, you know, to try to find things in our own playing that could use work. Um, and I definitely welcome that idea and, and use the time. It's like he was saying, this is actually a precious time of confinement because we can, uh, we can use it, you know, to, and the way I look at that is use it to um, work on things that you need to, um, you know, it could be artistically, technically, um, whatever. And then, but, and then, and develop, you know, however we want to work on our stuff, there's always work to be done. Right. Yeah. And even even uh, even um, on the creative side, on um, lyrical side, for me, subjects and and you know themes of songs um, may not apply for for everybody. The, their music is mostly instrumental, but for those who who might connect with my position of, of being songwriters, it's it's like everything. To me, the more time I spend at home, to more again is my 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 full month being at home by myself and not leaving. I've been restricting myself just to go for food every two weeks, trying to help the big picture of, of, uh, of this uh, thing. So I have had moments where I'm like, I never thought I would go back and appreciate something simple, something so simple that I took for granted so many years of my life, you know? And right now I'm seeing it uh, not to sound all hippie, but you know, everything like my window in the morning and i have a little bit of sunlight hitting some spots and i'm just thinking there and because i'm like okay there's no rush to get up out of bed right now i'm able to see that light that i was like i had never seen that fucking light hit that corner of my wall never because <laughs> i'm always waking up and boom let's go whatever whatever it is and just because we have more time to be more contemplating you know then, yeah, man, I saw a shadow on my door the other day that was amazing. <laughs> I was looking at that too. It does make you stop and appreciate um, the little things in life, right? It is. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I don't know your situations there in your, in your homes, if you have uh, companionship right now or you're by yourself, but even just being able to chat with someone, we're getting used to do this more often right now. Mm -hmm. But what's doing, in my mind, is doing the appreciation of, like seeing someone, hugging someone, touching someone. I mean, not to sound all, uh, you know, 
romantic <laughs> here, but literally touching someone in the sense, not in a sexual thing. I'm talking about in a, in a, like, hey man, like, dude, contact, fucking push or something, a hug, you know. I'm physical with my friends in the sense that, like, you know, and missing that right now. And who knows when is that that's going to go for, like, how long that's going to go for. So it's like, maybe there is something there that we all will feel at some point, And that might be a new subject to write a song. Mm. You know, that might be just simple, as simple as seeing someone cuticle or nail, you know. Mm. Something, mm. But yeah. I, I mean, take me in a broader sense is that there are so many things that we're being able to see only because of this situation, right? Only because, and then many other deeper things about how we are all connected and uh, the world is completely proving itself that we are all one big organism like together. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And I think it also, I know, um, you know, several um, musicians that I have known and played with, worked with, um, have passed away from this, from the COVID-19 thing. And it does make you, um, you know, just like any time, you know, somebody leaves, it, it makes you appreciate each moment that much more. Yeah. And try to take advantage of it, you know. Yeah, I imagine, I cannot imagine the the stress and the, the the strife and that's happening right now, the the sadness that is going to come out of uh, like New York City, right? Like you guys are right there. And uh, yeah. we're watching from afar in Toronto. We have cases, we have all this, you know, unfolding as well, not in the great uh, way, but but just imagine the, um, the, the amount of emotions there is going to come out of this, you know? Yeah many yeah. different kinds of emotions those who are not wanting to participate in the you know in the whole thing and 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 um i i think it'll be an interesting time after after this and I, i'm looking i'm and remaining positive even though it's a tricky one for artists you know mm -hmm. um but i think that my position is remaining positive is better than just saying fuck this and let's you know let's wrap it up Definitely. Um, so I don't know, and I'm I'm enjoying a little mezcal, so I'm feeling positive, especially <laughs> with mezcal. <laughs> yes, sir. Nice. Okay, guys. Well, um, I think that uh, maybe it's a nice um, section of our conversation to uh, think, start thinking about ending the uh, the Zoom meeting. And I'm so glad that you could come, and I'm so glad that uh, you were accepted to play for us as well. Uh, if it were just me, I would probably have you play for a few hours and I would just like, you know, mm -hmm. hang out here. Uh, but so maybe we can do another one at some point and uh, yeah, let's just uh, continue the conversation. Uh, Emily, I see a question. Someone was saying if there okay. is a way, just to wrap it up in, that, in the Q&A, there is a question, someone, Simon Locke, saying any musicians figured out ways to get paid performing live on the internet. Oh, I think that Jonathan is going to talk about it right now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Oh, All right. uh, I wasn't going to, uh, but we could definitely address kind of, the, I think we've hit most of these questions, though. We kind of touched a little bit on the payment. Um, and I think we've kind of gone through most of these, um, most of these, I, I, I think so. Don't you think, Emily? I think more or less, but uh, if there are more questions, uh, you know, I think we, I'm, I'm totally open to answering them uh, at some point if it's not right now. So I'm sorry, like the Q&A thing is kind of new for me. I've never really done this, but uh, mm -hmm. it's nice. It's nice. It's kind of a larger conversation. No, but uh, thank you both. You know, and I, I, I wish I could unmute everyone to, uh, you know, have everyone applaud uh, because I'm sure we would have that. Uh, but thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Emily. Thank you, Kike. Uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, thank you all. Really, uh, it was a wonderful panel um, and something that kind of takes us away from our usual our usual programming and one that I hope will continue to go down. Uh, to find more, uh, you'll all receive for attending uh, the link to this and uh, make sure you find us on social media. Uh, and uh, thank you all again. Uh, quickly, for our musicians, how can, like, what are uh, handles and, uh, you know, like places they can find your work? Peter? 
Uh, yeah, so I my website is www.peterapfelbaum.net, uh, P-E-T-E-R dot A, P like Peter, F like Frank, E-L, B like boy, A-U-M dot net. Um, at the moment, unfortunately, it's currently down, but it'll be back up later this week. That's normally where you can find links. Oh, hey, you know what? I'm going to, you guys should check this out. Um, there's something that happens here around seven o'clock every evening now. Hey, it's uh, happening. It's happening outside my apartment as well. I'm gonna open my window. Okay. Yeah, this yeah. Can okay. you guys hear that a little bit? Okay, I'm gonna open mine. <laughs> People are applauding and cheering and screaming and beating pots and pans and honking horns, and it's nice. it's what um, New Yorkers have been doing at seven o'clock every evening to give thanks and appreciation to um, all the healthcare workers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I, really loud outside my place. Like, it's going okay. it's going around the world. It's, it's a good thing. I mean... Oh, nice. nice. Yeah, it's a nice it's a nice touch. I, I've yeah. heard it too. Yeah, don't tell them they, yeah. they're doing it. It's cool. Okay. Yeah. One last... Uh, um, or did you finish with your uh, your website or? Oh, thanks, Kike. So yeah, uh, people also can find me on Instagram. Um, it's just my name with a dot in the middle, or mm -hmm. or on Facebook, um, and both um, carry updates of things I'm doing. Okay, um, and I guess uh, me is just my regular, you know, uh, website kikeescamilla.com, and also the social media the basic uh, instagram and facebook the same kike is camilla in case no one is uh on the computer or listening on a phone it's just q u i q u e <laughs> space e s c a m i double -L, l a uh it's not too hard to find uh these days but um one last thing i wanted to say that i'll take uh, a second about is there is some support. Someone asked about if there's any uh, places. Uh, I know that there's some support and funding coming from Music Cares in, in the US. I'm not sure and well versed about what and which ways they're able to help artists right now. But uh, I would recommend anybody in the US to look that up, uh, Music Cares. And uh, I know that they're doing things you know, finding ways to, to help musicians. We have some in Canada, some um, some initiatives from many different, uh, in, including Facebook Canada is, is, is part of an initiative to support artists. Maybe there is a way to say to Facebook, uh, you know, American Facebook, uh, that they could match what Facebook Canada is doing. Uh, they spend, I think they, they put about, $250,000 to give uh, musicians grants, $1,000 per act. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how that works and, and what they have between Facebook Canada and Facebook the US, but if, if the small branch of Facebook in Canada is doing it, I think that maybe some music organizations can go around and get some, some uh, and also other, uh, other American companies that I've heard they're doing initiatives to support musicians, giving money, grants it's uh, Shopify mm -hmm. Shopify is also giving uh, they just release news about for this is for Canadian artists they're giving five hundred thousand dollars the same way each act gets a thousand dollars grants for, to perform at your house which I mean how, how many people you want in your band but obviously they want just one safe uh, performer but uh, it's also through Shopify uh, combined with other labels, uh, m small labels in Canada. But I think that there are ways to actually get active and, and, and remind those companies in the U.S. Maybe they, 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 if they can do it here, I'm sure they could do it there too. So that's all my two cents I can say that my, we might have something uh, similar. Perfect. Well, thank you for those resources. Actually, I'll, I'll try to dig a couple of those up and see if maybe we on our follow-up email, we can share those with our audience. You know, if, Either we have musicians joining us or people who know musicians. Uh, and also one last, uh, I, I support the Musicians Union in Canada. Uh, I, I work as a consultant to the specific branch of the Toronto Musicians Association, which is the local, the Toronto local. But I, I, I can say that right now, 
the general uh, umbrella under the big general umbrella of the Un musicians union which is the uh, american federation of musicians they are, they are also sharing so much information about where to knock on certain benefits or relieve uh, benefits that are being offered either in the US or in Canada. I'm getting a lot of emails from them and there's a lot of valuable information uh, for musicians, either whether they're unionized or not. It's basically just posting everything that is coming through. Uh, they're very active right now, helping you know, condense all the crazy amount of information into something that musicians can just go. So I would recommend to any musicians of any kind of genre, any uh, field, sign in for the email letters. And right now, you don't need to become a, a union member. You just go and, and sign in so that you can get those infos and open them because there are a lot of links that, that are sharing third-party uh, information um, in across the US and Canada. So that's my last, <laughs> sorry. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you all. And thank awesome. you, Emily. Uh, I'll thank let you. you sign off uh, for this. Uh, so over to you, Emily. Oh, I have to, uh, sorry, what do you want me to do? Oh, no, we're good. Uh, well, I was going to let you say goodbye to everyone. Uh, say cheers. Okay. Oh, no, thank you so much for coming, guys. And it was such a pleasure. And I just always uh, enjoy having conversations with you. And I think that uh, our next challenge could be that you two could be performing together live on a Zoom conference improvising uh, something i think that would be our next well that's already uh, our next yeah, it's, panel it's possible now it's possible yeah <laughs> no, limit, forward. The no just, limit no limits uh, world <laughs> <laughs> before that's this right. before this meeting i had a i had a like a party from someone in in israel sending it to europe and then europe uh, connecting with north america it was, it was uh, like the way they connected two platforms, one to send the, the music feed and one to send the image, but it was very real and it was very like, like synced in time. It was crazy how, how well you could sync uh, different, different people around the world. So I think it'll be wow. possible for music. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. I'll bring All the right. turtle shells. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The donkey jaw. <laughs> All right, yeah, there you All right go. Peter. Thanks. Nice meeting you and uh, okay, nice cheers to everybody. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Thanks, Pleasure, Thanks guys. So much. Be safe. You too. Ciao for now. Thank you for joining us for this broadcast. To learn more about our digital forums and programs, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. For membership information, please visit www.forumpressassociation.org and on Twitter at FBA New York. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Foreign Press Association.